the question of the West, Rome of the West, has established an alliance with the Jews. It's a Judeo-Christian alliance. And it is that alliance which has brought the Jews back to the Holy Land, Banu Israel back to the Holy Land. And Allah says in Surah Al-Anbiya that that is Gog and Magog. وَحَرَامٌ عَلَىٰ قَرْيَةٍ أَهْلَقْنَاهَا أَنَّهُمْ لَا يَرْجِعُونَ حَتَّى إِذَا فُتِحَتْ يَأْجُوجُ وَمَأْجُوجُ وَهُمْ مِنْ كُلِّ حَلَبٍ يَنْسِلُونَ When Gog and Magog are released and they spread out in all directions with their indestructible power, you'll see these people being brought back to their town from which they had been expelled and then banned from returning to the town. Which town? Jerusalem. So room of the West is Gog and Magog. Rome of the West is the biggest oppressor in the world today. Rome of the West is waging war not just on Islam, but waging war on Orthodox Christianity and waging war on the religious way of life. Rome of the West is waging war not only on Islam, but waging war on Orthodox Christianity and waging war on the religious way of life, which includes Hinduism, includes Buddhism. That's what Rome of the West is doing. So we, can we be in alliance with them when Allah has prohibited it? So then which Christians would it be that Allah speaks about positively in the Quran and with whom we have a natural affinity? That when they are victorious, we celebrate. Answer, it has to be Rome of the East. It has to be Rome of the East. Do we have to make them friendly to us? Oh, no. No, no, no. It's not dependent on how we behave with them. It is not dependent on how we behave with them. No. It is what Allah has declared will happen, whether you like it or whether you don't like it. That Christian world is going to become closest in friendship and alliance with us. Friendship, friendship and love and affection for us. That Christian world is going to be closest in love and affection for us Muslims. Whether you like it or whether you don't, whether you approve of it or whether you don't, it is not dependent upon you. It's happening already. The Orthodox Christian world is already drawing closer to the Muslim world despite 600 years of bloody Ottoman oppression, despite Hagia Sophia being taken away from them and convertingly converted sinfully, monstrously, shamefully into a masjid. And the Muslims of Turkey cannot understand that. When are you going to wake up? Hmm? Despite the enslavement of Christian women, that they belong to their harem, despite taking Christian boys and converting them by force to Islam and then training them to become the Janissaries, the elite fighting force of the Ottoman Empire, Christian boys converted to Islam by force, shame on you. Despite all these things that the Ottoman Empire did, endless wars against Russia, enslavement by the Crimean Tatars of Russian people, despite all of that, the Orthodox Christian world is now turning and becoming more friendly to Islam and showing more love and affection for Islam. I may not live to see, but my students will see it tomorrow. The love and the affection will, come, will become greater and greater despite the hatred and the enemy, enmity of my critics for them. Yes, it's going to happen. And so when you find a hadith which says of room, that room is going to betray you, <laughs> that, that someone is going to get up and say, the cross has been triumphant. And then a Muslim will get up and say, no, Allah has been triumphant. And he'll kill the Christian. <laughs> and because one Christian is killed, the whole Christian army will now turn against the Muslim army and wage war against Muslims. Would that qualify as room? An entire Christian army that wages war on the Muslim army because one person got up and killed a Christian. And so the, what the Quran says is false then. 
Uh, can that be the room that the Qur'an is speaking about, this room? You have to use the Qur'an to judge the hadith. And whenever you find a hadith or a part of a hadith in conflict with the Qur'an, put it aside. It's going to be difficult, really difficult. It's going to require the best intellectual acumen you have. It remembers the highest standard of scholarship and also nur from Allah, protection from error, to be able to wade through the hadith and locate the, the traps which are there, the fabrications which are there to misguide us and to corrupt us in our thinking. And so my conclusion is that we are now located at a moment in history when the Saudis are preparing, sharpening their swords, okay, for a big and a dramatic move of landing troops in Syria and taking the whole world of Sunni Islam with them. And the Qataris don't want a part of that at all. Because Qatar understands Saudi Arabia better than anybody else that understands Saudi Arabia. Birds of a feather, you see. And because Qatar does not want to be a part of that, Qatar prefers to, pre to protect herself in this big war that's coming. That Qatar is saying, no, we're not prepared to go along. And the Qatar is maintaining friendly ties with, with, um, with Iran. I noticed that Russia has responded to Qatar's predicament, and Russia is sending uh, supplies of food Iran is sending supplies of food, and uh, Turkey is standing with Qatar because Turkey has a military base in Qatar. And so sending a message to Saudi Arabia that if you attempt any military intervention, you're going to have to face the Turkish army, which is the biggest army in NATO after, I think, Germany. Um, so. What is going to happen now in Qatar is very interesting. The Saudis are not, not going to back down because this is their survival for the Saudi regime to survive the great war that is coming. They need, they need, they need to establish themselves as the unchallenged and unchallengeable leaders of the world of Sunni Islam. And by the hook or by the crook, they have to f provoke Sunni Shia civil war. I want to ask of you to think carefully of the views which I have expressed tonight. Do not accept my views unless and until you think about them carefully and unless and until you are convinced that I am correct. Remember that I make mistakes. Uh, in my next talk, uh, in the one that I'm going to be giving in Geneva later this month, I intend to take up the subject of Dabatul Ard. I believe I made a mistake on Dabatul Ard. Dabatul Ard is a beast of the earth. You know that the Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, there were ten major signs of Akhir uh, Number one, uh, Dajjal. Number two, Gog and Magog. Number three, the return of the son of Mary, the true Messiah. Number four, Dukhan, or smoke. Number five, Dabatul Ard, the beast of the earth. Number six, that the sun will rise from the west. Number seven, eight, and nine, three earthquakes tree sinking of the earth, and the earth swallows what it swallows, one in the east, one in the west, and one in Arabia. And number 10, that the fire will come out of Yemen and drive people to the place of assembly for judgment. These are the 10 major signs mentioned in Sahih Muslim. Uh, one of them is the beast of the earth, and I came to the conclusion based on the study of only the data located in the Quran and some of the Ahadith. I came to the conclusion that Dabbatul Ard was the state of Israel. And a Saudi Sheikh, who is a very uh, acute thinker and writer, Sheikh Safar al Hawali, uh, he came to the conclusion, much quite similar to mine, that is the Zionist movement. And his, his book was entitled Yawmul Ghadab. Uh, so our two views are very close to each other. He says the Zionist movement, I see the state of Israel. But I believe that I use wrong methodology and the proper methodology on my part would have led me to another conclusion which I will share with you 
inshallah, when we have the seminar in Geneva on the 29th of July at 4 o'clock in the afternoon at the Sal Sabil uh, Halal Restaurant. If you're not as yet registered, uh, you don't have to register for the seminar, which starts at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. It's Yomus Sabto Saturday, uh, the first Saturday of the month of Zulqa'ala, or the 29th of July. You don't have to register for the seminar, but you have to register if you want to join in the dinner, which takes place after the seminar in the main dining hall of the restaurant. Uh, go to my website and you'll see the email address for the restaurant where you can contact the restaurant to register for the for the dinner. So in that lecture on the 29th of July, inshallah, I hope to share with you my view on the subject of Dabbatul Ard, one of the major signs of the last day, and uh, to expand further on proper methodology for the subject of Akhir Zaman. I thank you for listening to me and I hope and pray that Allah may guide us on the right path and protect us from error. From error, thank you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.